Welcome to the video format of the Entrepreneur Lifestyle Podcast. And if you haven't yet, please do subscribe to our podcast using the link below. And now enjoy this interview. Today, I'm here with Kristen Caulfield, who is an eating expert, and she teaches purpose-driven humans how to turn food and habit into superpowers for health and happiness. I mean, that's just exciting, turning it into a superpower. Kristen, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to have you. Ben, I am so excited to be on your show, and I just love your accent, so um, <laughs> this is going to be really fun. I have an accent crush on you, and I want to teach everybody how they can actually have a superpower by the end of this podcast. Oh, well, uh, let's go straight in. Before we dive into the meat of, and the content of what we're going to be diving into today, could you give us a quick 60-second intro so those who don't know you can have a better understanding of where you've been and what you're currently doing? Thank you. Um, Kristen Cofield, the founder of the culinary cure.com, which is where I teach all those purpose driven humans how to break down what they do every day that mindless repetition 33% of what we do, and flip the switch on it so that instead of being mindless, it becomes mindful and becomes a powerful tool for productivity. Got it. And when we look into the journey that you've been on, you've obviously experienced a variety of, of you know, incredibly challenging times that has moved you onto this path. Would you mind sharing a little bit so we can get a better understanding of what brought you on this journey? I love to say my story is a little bit of everyone's story. Everything was fine until it wasn't. <laughs> and this kind of stuff doesn't happen overnight. It happens over time. And so many of us find ourselves, something goes wrong, and we just kind of like take it in stride, and then something else happens. And before we know it, we've gone from a really big world to a really small world. In my case, my mother was, her breast cancer came back. My father was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. I was, our marriage was having some problems. There were some financial struggles. I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. And then my dog died, which was you know, the tipping point. And the rope was long. But when you get to the end of the rope and there's no more rope, you're just hanging. You're literally hanging and you're looking below. You have a thrive or die moment. And in that moment, I realized that this could not be what the universe had in mind for me. And I couldn't control all of that stuff. But I could control one thing. I could control what was on the end of my fork. So instead of worrying about all that other stuff, I focused on what I was eating and drinking, what I was putting in my mouth, and that changed everything. Mm. And I've heard you on different videos share uh, the, the same you know, way in that you can control what's on the end of your fork. And I think it's a, it's a brilliant way to, to say it. And as we dive into this conversation. So when it comes to food, I think the reason why a lot of people struggle is because there's so much misinformation online. And when we have doubt, we're really unsure you know, where to turn and what to do. So you mentioned in, you know, harnessing food for productivity. For someone who's thinking, you know, I just like to eat, tell us a little bit about <laughs> um, I, I love this question because I think when people understand food and its purpose, it's easy for them to make better choices. Feeding yourself is a 21st century survival skill. So we got to get it right. And lifestyle diseases are the fastest growing diseases in the world. And that's, these are diseases we cause by our lifestyle, by our habits. So food in its most basic form is calories. And calories in their most basic form, if you remember from science in high school, calories are energy. So food is fuel. When we understand that, it's easier to put the right fuel in our engine. So for example, if you have a diesel vehicle, you are not going to put unleaded gasoline in there because you would destroy the engine. And that's what happens when we put the wrong fuel in our engine. I always like to say, hey, just because there are chemicals in food, that does not mean chemicals are food. Mm. 
So when we ingest chemicals, when we ingest these added sugars, sodium chloride, which is a manufactured form of salt, uh, GMOs, um, highly processed foods, these are not things this engine was designed to run on. And they create this low level IgG inflammation. And what's so sneaky and scary about it is we don't know we have it. We just, we use, we forgot what it feels like to feel amazing every single day. So people get used to, you know, I like to say shitty is not your new normal. People get used to feeling kind of crappy. It takes two cups of coffee to get going in the morning and then some refined carbohydrates to keep you going. And then you might need a glass of wine at the end of the day. So this is a very typical scenario of what happens over time. Remember, it happens over time, overnight. So it's a slow slide. And once we understand the power of food, who doesn't want to get more done? We want to get more done. We want to hop out of bed fueled for the day, filled with energy. Each day is infinite possibilities. And it's our job to harness them and live our best lives. Yes, I, I absolutely love that. And I think what's what's incredibly important for, for those listening, and, and I love the, the analogy that you gave of the car, is how often when we're putting the wrong fuel in the engine, we don't know anything different, especially when it happens over a period of time. And you know, I certainly experienced that myself before I started shifting uh, what I ate and, and the, the energy um, that I needed to have consistently each day. So when, when we look into perhaps specific meals or, or things that you find have been incredibly beneficial, that if, if the beginning of your journey, someone could have just given you, hey, look, do this, don't do that. Like what would be some of the, perhaps the simple hacks that you find are super effective for some people to actually go away and start to implement? Yeah, let's just cut right to the meat of the matter here. We should all be eating the way our great, great grandparents ate. So if there's something on the label, you you don't know what it is, that's a, that's a no. If there's more than like six ingredients, then it's processed, that's a no. So eat like your great, great grandparents ate and eat seasonal and local. And I love to explain this. When we buy food, we're paying for nutrients. So think about what you buy in terms of nutrients. You could fill your grocery cart for a hundred bucks and have no nutritional value in there. So let's just cut through the wellness overwhelm. Food is fuel. And our consumer dollars, what we're buying are nutrients. We're not just buying food, we're buying nutrients. So it's a better value to buy food that's more nutrient dense. So when we talk about shopping local, eating seasonally, there's a really good reason for that. When we shop at the local farmer's market from the, the people who grow these foods, we are getting more nutrients for our consumer dollars. Those foods weren't, didn't have to travel. They probably weren't treated with as many chemicals. They're making less of a footprint on the environment because they haven't been stored in plastic. You know, you could buy blueberries at the grocery store. I'm not kidding you. Do this experiment, buy some blueberries, put them in your crisper drawer and see just how long they keep in there. It's, it can be like a couple of months. So you don't even know how old your food is when you buy it at the grocery store. Yeah. So shop local, shop seasonal, because you are buying more nutrients for your consumer dollars. You'll save money, you'll have more energy, and you will waste less because waste is a huge problem. People buy food, right? They're shopping for food. They're not buying meals. Buy meals then you won't be throwing out food at the end of the week that you didn't have a plan for. Yeah, I absolutely love that. And, and I, I, I haven't heard it expressed in that way of your dollars are buying you more nutrition. I think that's a fantastic way to say it. I often say that your, you know, your health is an investment, not an expense, but I love the way in which you articulate that into the nutritional standpoint. So when, when someone's listening to this and they understand it and they say, okay, well, I can you know, get more nutrition. I can do those things. But you know, what happens if you know, I'm overwhelmed, I need something quick, especially in the fast paced world we're in now. I think a lot of people struggle with these uh, quick fixes and they kind of have their go to meals they go to again and again. So what, what are some of the perhaps go to fast meals that you find are super effective to allow you to keep 
uh, operating at a very high capacity during your day? So at the culinarycure.com, uh, what, what I didn't explain as we started was my background is culinary. I'm a chef. I had a catering company. I live to eat. My family goes on vacation. We're sitting in the morning having our coffee, talking about what we're going to eat at lunch. And at lunch, we're talking about what we're going to eat at dinner. And at dinner, we're talking about how much we're going to enjoy our, our coffee and breakfast the next morning. So mm -hmm. food is my life. It is my creative medium, and it is, a, it is how I give people a superpower, simple recipes. So everybody should take note of this. Breakfast or the first meal of the day. So breakfast, break fast. When we're asleep, our body is fasting. The first thing we need, need to do when we end that fast is rehydrate with water to help the body detox because the body goes through a detox, all of the metabolic waste ends up in our lymphatic system, and we want to help the body flush that. So we, we start by rehydrating, but whatever time we eat our first meal, this meal needs to contain fiber, healthy fat, and protein so that we can fuel our engine with the, the right calories and nutrients for our day. So most people are eating backwards. They're eating these little tiny breakfasts and then they're having a bigger lunch and then they eat a big dinner and the whole and that throws the body off because now the body has to digest when it's ready for rest and restore mode. So flip the switch, eat breakfast like a prince, like a king, lunch like a prince, breakfast, dinner like a pauper and give yourself the right fuel with fiber, fat, and protein. So that might be avocado toast. Um, I make a banana mug muffin, which is great. Think differently about that meal. It, it doesn't need dairy. You don't need juice. You don't need granola. What you need is fiber, fat, and protein. Sometimes I have a leftover salad with a hard-boiled egg, um, there are a whole bunch of recipes on my website. Chia seed pudding takes minutes to make. You can throw some fruit and nuts on that. You're ready to go. But the real secret for busy entrepreneurs is spend a couple of hours one day a week setting up your meals for those most important days. For me, it's Monday through Friday. I need five breakfasts, five lunches, and four dinners because usually we're out on the weekend. Yes. So I prepare stuff ahead of time. I, I make my salad, my salad dressing. I, I make these chili powder chicken thighs that are amazing. All these recipes are on the Culinary Cure website. But the two hours, and I happen to love to go to the grocery store, but you could order your food. You know, the two hours I spend prepping those meals during the week means I never spend more than about 15 minutes prepping a meal. Mm. So I get back all the time I spent and then some because I have everything I need ready to go. So this is a big thing for people. They love to go and shop when they're hungry. <laughs> and a lot of people have negative thoughts about cooking. So I like to say it's not cooking. There's nothing we're doing here that's cooking. We're just doing food assembly. Cool. I love that. And, and I think food assembly makes a lot of sense, especially as entrepreneurs, when you've got lots of things going on, you don't want to be reaching for something that's going to be giving you cloud fog when you need to make efficient decisions during the day. So when we look into perhaps measuring uh, how someone is doing, what are your thoughts on acid alkaline tests and things like that to see how much alkaline and acid there is in your body as an indicator? Is there anything that you find as effective so someone listening could perhaps just get an indicator on where they are at the moment so they can then use that insight to then move forward? Well, I don't actually use those tests, but because I'm encouraging people to move towards a more plant-based diet, yeah. and there's, uh, have you heard the, the word reducitarian? Uh, I don't think I have, no. Okay. I just did a TV segment and a radio show on this. Reducitarianism is a way of encouraging people to move towards a more plant-based diet. When we eat more plants, we raise the alkalinity level in our bodies. So that is the natural way to become more alkaline. 
Acidity is linked with inflammation. We already talked about how dangerous low level inflammation is. If we eat diets with too many animal products, too much processed food, too much sugar, too many artificial ingredients, that creates acidity in our bodies. So being a reducitarian, I'm going to challenge everybody listening to take this challenge for 30 days, reduce the amount of animal products you consume by 10% and increase the amount of plants in your diet by 10%. So we're not swapping out those animal products for crappy carbohydrates. <laughs> we're swapping them out for more fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. So that's something that's very doable for anybody that's listening. Lots of entrepreneurs, doctors, nurses, dentists, busy professionals have horrible food habits because they're sugar crunchers. And they use sugar and carbohydrates and caffeine to fuel their day. And that might work for a while, but you, it's not sustainable and it will steal your health. So more plants, less animal products, that's something everybody can do. And we should talk about hydration. I'm just going to say. Uh, that, that was the next question. We're on the same, we're on the same point. So, so let's talk about hydration because I know we, we've chatted about food and I, I definitely agree with the acidity and alkalinity. And I think it's important to be aware of that. So when it comes to, comes to hydration, talk to us a little bit about hydrating versus drinking water because some people drink a lot of water, but they're still dehydrated. Why is that? I know it's so crazy. And it's our modern lifestyle. We are sitting in front of screens. There's electromagnetic energy around us. We our homes, our, the windows are shut. Our air is stale, you know, and here's the big thing. Our water is processed. Unless you are drinking well water out in the country, most of us are drinking water that's been processed through the municipal processing plant, treated with chemicals to kill dangerous pathogens. Chemicals are also added like chlorine. And so what we end up drinking is basically dead water. As humans, we are designed to drink live water with good bacteria and micronutrients and minerals and you know, phytochemicals, all kinds of really good stuff. So our water's dead, which means it's harder for the water to get into our cells. So we can do some things to hydrate better. Yes, we should be drinking water, but no, we shouldn't be drinking 100 ounces of water at three o'clock. We need to sip our water throughout the day. We can do that with herbal teas. That, that's a great way to make your water a little more bioavailable. That first water of the day when you wake up, that ending your, your fast with rehydrating, think eight to 10 ounces of warm or room temperature water with the juice of half a lemon. So the lemon goes in acidic, but it turns alkaline in the body. So that's a good thing, raising the alkalinity. Uh, use a straw to protect your tooth enamel because it is acidic when it's in your mouth. Um, and then by, by eating more plants, we get plants are water dense and that water comes attached with all these micronutrients that make it more bioavailable for us. But here's a really great hack. You can buy electrolyte drops. Trace Minerals is a great company. There's a bunch of companies out there that, um, that make them from ancient sea salts. So electrolytes are um, these types of salts that make our water more like the water we're designed to drink, and they make our water mimic our blood more. So it's more easily absor absorbed into our blood cells, and then it can get through our body. Mm to where it needs to be. But here's the big one. If you start hydrating today and your goal is to drink half your body weight in ounces of water, it's going to take you two weeks to get fully hydrated. Mm, so start okay. now, get hydrated and stay there for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hydration is, is definitely one of the keys. And for people who want to be able to hydrate better, can they just add some sea salt, some Himalayan salt? Mm -hmm. Do you recommend specific going for different electrolytes and specific things to actually allow them to absorb it more efficiently? Um, yes. So the electrolyte drops are very easy. 
Um, and every time I recommend them, somebody's like, oh, my God, it made my water taste awful. And I'm like, you don't need to put that as many as they say in. Just make sure you're putting a squirt in every beverage you drink all day, not the two teaspoons that make your your cup of tea undrinkable. You can use Himalayan pink sea salt that has been mined. So these ancient sea salts, this is really important. We want to make sure that this, and this goes for any salt that anybody listening is using. You want to make sure you're buying Himalayan salt that was mined in India or Pakistan that was formed before pollution. So all of the, our oceans today are filled with microplastics from all the degrading plastic bottles. And so the salts being formed today contain these microplastics. These ancient salts formed before pollution contain 84 essential elements, micro, you know, um, minerals and vitamins um, that were formed before pollution and that actually our body requires. So it's, you want to be boosting your water and you want to be flipping your salt. So if you're using salt that comes in a box from the grocery store, it's probably sodium chloride, which is manufactured in a lab. Spend a little more money, um, get some Himalayan pink sea salt from these ancient mines. Brilliant. Absolutely love that. Um, fascinating conversation. I'm sure there are people listening who would love to understand a little bit more about what you do. Could you just say your website again for someone to be able to go to it? Yes, it's theculinarycure.com. And people can see my book there, How Healthy People Eat, An Eater's Guide to Healthy Habits. They can watch my videos. They can learn more about my coaching programs and um I just, you know, I have an active Instagram because I am trying to save the world one bite at a time. So it's all about getting the right information to people so they can make just just one decision better today. And maybe that's going to be the salt or maybe you're going to eat fiber, fat and protein for breakfast. You're going to start hydrating better. Pick one, commit to it and start getting your superpower today. Love that. And, and I think it's fantastic because I think what's most important is the compounding effect that all these little habits have that allow you to move further in time without all the stresses and, and the pains that a lot of people struggle with. If there was one thing that you wanted people to take away from this conversation, Kristen, what would that one thing be? Invest in your future wellness. When we lose, if we lose our health, we spend all of our time and money trying to get it back. It is so much more cost effective and fun to invest in our future health now and enjoy the ride. Love that. Well, thank you so much uh, for listening, everyone. Thank you, Kristen, uh, for having such a wonderful conversation. Make sure to reach out and we will see you on the next one. Thank you, Ben.